talented artists, and we get to know them on a more personal basis. Today, I'm very excited because I met a wonderful artist from the United States, but didn't live there her whole life. She's played all over the world. She's an international artist and I uh, found her in Puerto Vallarta, of all places. So we're here in Studio 72, Puerto Vallarta, instead of my studio in California, but there are many international artists here as well. So today I'm very excited to interview Empress Alyasha. Let me tell you a little more about her. Performing throughout Europe for over 20 years, Empress Alyasha has toured with her quintet, Jazz Emotions her trio, Triplex, as well as jazz romances, Nightline, the Berlin Dance Orchestra, the Golden Gospel Singers, the Black Gospel Voices, and her own gospel quintet, Right Spirit. She also starred and co-starred in many of Germany's Broadway musicals, including The Lion King, Hair, The Buddy Holly Story, Sister Act, Shout, and Oh Happy Day. After graduating from high school, Empress Alyasha started her acting career studying and performing at the New Heritage Repertory Theater in Harlem under the direction of Roger Furman and at the New Federal Theater, Lower East Side, under the direction of Woody King Jr. Upon receiving her bachelor's degree from CUNY, she began a serious career as a dramatic actress, appearing regularly in several TV soaps and later, later co-starring in Broadway and off-Broadway musicals including Freedom Train, Magic and Lions, 42nd Street, and How Do You Spell Watergate, as well as touring with her own band, Edge, in the U.S. The love of music was implanted deep in Empress Alyosha's soul from the cradle. <clears throat> her father, Boise Anderson, a noted saxophonist, played calypso music the house music of his time, and often took her to gigs and encouraged her to play guitar for his musical callings. Her uncle Cecil Anderson, known as the Duke of Iron, is credited as the first singer to record Calypso in America, making way for other artists including Harry Belafonte, who also had hits with some of the Duke's songs. In 1952, St. Thomas Carnival, the Duke improvised a song he later recorded called Rain, Don't Stop the Carnival. Inspired by his famous song, jazz saxophonist Sonny Rollins composed and recorded his own Don't Stop the Carnival, and later composed and recorded a piece entitled Duke of Iron in her uncle's memory. At that time, when popular music has become so computerized with synthesized beats and sounds, Empress Alyasha continues to mesmerize audiences with her original compositions that are as natural, melodious, and soul-stirring as they are poignant, political, and funny. Senses is Empress Alyosha's favorite project. Together with Las Vegas bass musician Adjem Hotep, keyboards Kenneth Lotus Edmonds and bass, and David Williams too drums, she performs an original repertoire that embraces musical styles from jazz, soul, pop, and rock. Thank you for being here in Studio 72, Puerto Vallarta. Thank you so much for inviting me. Empress Alyasha. <laughs> I love your name. Thank you. And I have to ask you, that is your real name, right? Why do people always ask me that? <laughs> I, well, is your real name Diego? It's my stage name. Oh, it's your stage yes. name. Oh, but I love it. Thank you. But this is this is yes my real name. Real name. Um, it's a very heavy name, you know. When yeah. people name you, you have a lot to live up to. Yeah, especially an empress. <laughs> well, that's really not the part that's so difficult to live up to. What's difficult to live up to is Alyasha. Um, it's a Muslim name. It that's means nice. God's helper. Oh. So I am Empress God's helper. I see. That's a beautiful name. So, thank you. That's a beautiful thank name. You. It's a lot of responsibility. Well, I just want to tell the audience that, that I met Empress at a fundraiser here in Puerto Vallarta. And when she walked in the door, I was walking out. And you just lighted up the room. <laughs> and I, before I left, because um, well, I have to say something here. I am very 
connected with people of color. Um, even though I've lived in the U.S. most of my life, mm -hmm. I, I connect with people of color, being of color myself. Well, same people. You know, <laughs> yeah, my people. And, and, and of course, that was a party where everyone was practically, you know, Anglo or white. And, and there were some, some Mexicans and other Latinos. But you, you walked in the door and you just lighted up the room. <laughs> I saw your face. I saw your eyes. And, and I just said, I, I can't go yet. I need to meet this this person. Oh, so you were leaving. I was leaving. Oh, and you stayed just to meet me. Oh, yes, how nice. Yes, I Thank didn't tell you. you. <laughs> and so we talked a little bit, found out that you're a jazz singer mm -hmm. and that you're in Puerto Vallarta and you, I asked for your card and then um, and then we've seen each other around town. At and, different events. At always. different <laughs> events. So thank you so much for being here. I, I, I really want people to know your story. Oh, because, thank you. Thank you um, for the invitation. So why don't, you, why don't we start um, from the beginning. Talk about um, where you were born. Talk about your family a little bit. Okay, that's and then, really and, the beginning. <laughs> yeah, um, and then we, we only have about 30 minutes mm -hmm. and we're going to play some songs in between. Okay. Uh, so that we don't bore everybody with just a lot of talk. <laughs> We're going to have some music in, in about five minutes, okay? Uh, so uh, go ahead and, and start and tell us about your story. So actually, um, I was born in New York City, but I am first-generation American. Uh, my father is from Port of Spain, Trinidad. Okay. Um, actually, my mom, I'm first-generation on my father's side. My mom's first-generation on her mother's side. She was, her parents were both born in Trinidad. And I won't tell you that story, how they got together, because it's really interesting how my grandparents met um, trying to immigrate to the United States. Um, yeah, and I grew up in New York. I lived in every borough. New York City has five boroughs. I lived mm -hmm. in every one of them. Including, and I can tell you where, including Staten Island. Staten Island, Manhattan. Don't go there. You don't want to go there. <laughs> You know, there are parts of Staten Island that are actually very beautiful, but it's kind of rural, so everything is not easily accessible, so you really want yeah. to not leave Staten Island alone, unless you really want to be alone. Don't go to Staten Island. And so you lived our, your childhood in New York? My childhood, I lived uh, mostly in the Bronx. When I was born, my, my family was living in Harlem, okay. and that's always been a question because I understood, I don't have my birth certificate anymore, I understood that I was born in the Bronx and my brother says, we were all born in Harlem, what are you talking about? Yeah. So I was either born in Harlem or the Bronx, <laughs> but uh, my first few years I grew up in, in Harlem and then we moved to the Bronx because my mother wanted us to have a better school situation, to go to better schools. and mm -hmm. So I grew up in the Bronx until I went to the end of junior high school. We moved out to Queens, so I went to junior high school in Queens, and then I went to college in Brooklyn. Now, what years were, were these so people can get a context oh. <laughs> of the you era know? that you lived in? Okay, I lived in the era of <laughs> the 50s, 60s, which is really interesting because when you talk about school, I lived in New York City and I went to school when they first started integrating schools in New York City. Most in people the 50s? don't in the 50s. Most people don't know that history. No, they don't. But from the time that I was in the first grade, I was always the only black child in my class until I got to the fifth grade. <laughs> and when I got to the fifth grade, we moved to Queens. So we were in a black neighborhood, so that I finally <laughs> met some other black kids. So let me ask you, how did you feel being the only black kid in, in a white school? Well, when I realized that I was the only black kid and it made me different, it was pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't you realize it the moment you showed up, the first day no, you showed up? No, I did not realize it. How old were you? I was six. Six. I didn't go to kindergarten because my birthday's in September. I wasn't old enough to go to kindergarten. So my mom waited until the next year, and I went straight into the first grade. Now, had you already been around white kids or Well, or except not? for the time that we lived in Harlem, when we moved to the Bronx, we were always in a white neighborhood. 
Okay. And uh, there were always young kids my age, and we always played with each other. There was never any kind okay. of problems at all. So that that's why you probably didn't feel that immediately that no. you were different than the rest. No, I didn't feel it. Okay. I didn't feel it until I got to school, and my first grade teacher did really terrible things to me. Um, d uh, discriminatory things mm -hmm. to me and I didn't understand why she would always treat me differently from the other kids and it, I didn't understand until much later <laughs> <laughs> until uh, the, the civil rights movement, I, I started getting old enough and interested in the news and what was going on in the world. And I started watching what was going on in the South and with Martin Luther King and everything. And that was really when I realized that I was different. So it was really the person in power in, in, in the classroom, which was, of course, the teacher. Yes. That made you feel different. See, that's why people, it's so, if there are any teachers out there, it's so important to understand how much power you have mm -hmm. because it can be used for good and it could be used to destroy people. You know, and, and, and I had a similar experience and I'm not going to go into it right now, but, but thank you for sharing that because a lot of people don't understand and, and realize what, um, you know, a lot of our people go through. It's, it's deep, you know. It is. And, it scars you for life, too. It really, I, I watched the Colin <clears throat> Powell um, documentary a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. and I think his, simil his situation was somewhat similar to mine mm -hmm. in terms of not knowing that you're different. Yeah. And finding it out at a, at a later age. So it's something very common. Uh, that yeah. happens to us when we are in an environment where people will take the opportunity to discriminate against us and, and mm -hmm. we just didn't know. So talking about different, when did you realize that you were different because you had either music inside you <laughs> or you had a passion for music or you, you resonated with music? When, when did that happen? That happened when I was, I guess it happened at a young age, when I was about 16. Okay. Um, my father gave me my first guitar and I, I joined an organization called, oh, I don't remember, it was Christians and Jews, something like this kind of an organization. And um, they had a talent show and I had all the time been playing a little guitar by myself at home. And I wanted to be in the talent show, and I thought, what can I do? I can sing and play guitar. And I went, and I, and I did it. Mm -hmm. And there was a talent scout there, and he took my name and my number, and he said, I want to talk to your parents. And he called my parents up, and he went to my house. Mm -hmm. And I sat there between the talent scout and my parents, and the talent scout said, She's going to be really good. I'm going to pay for lessons for her. I'm going to pay for dance. I'm going to pay for theater. I'm going to pay for music lessons wow. for her. And uh, we're going to develop a career for her. And I got so excited because I thought, who ever heard of anything like this? This yeah. is wonderful. And you had just been playing for uh, not that long, Yeah, right? just, a, just a few months. And my parents said no. My parents said Education comes first. She has to go to school. When she's finished school, if she decides she wants to do something like that, she but can do it. But your dad was a musician, right? My mom was the boss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And my mom always said, musicians don't make enough money. You know, we always have to struggle because your father doesn't make enough money. My father was a tailor. He had his own business during uh -huh. the day. So he worked long hours. Oh, he, he worked, was a tailor and yeah, then a musician. Yeah, he worked. He, well, he was a musician first, but, you know, he had to have a, yeah. a alternate skill. So he worked long hours. He worked six days a week in his shop. Mm -hmm. And on the weekends, he played music. Okay. He had to work like that in order to... So we were three children, and he had to support oh. us. I was going to ask you, uh, you have two siblings? You have a, an older brother and a younger sister. Uh, so you're the middle child. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And what was your household like? Was there music all the time? Was there was there music player? all the what, time. <laughs> what, what, what was going on in terms of There was music, music all the time. Everybody had their own music day. So you could choose what music was going to be played on that day. So 
on my day, I had folk music. I had Buffy St. Marie and Peter Paul and Mary. Oh, I know and them. <laughs> Richie Havens and that sort of thing. And how would you listen to that? Okay. Records? I uh, had records. Radio? I bought records. We had uh, those old fashioned systems RCA. with the seven. Yeah. You yeah, yeah, see yeah. the red and white? Yeah. <laughs> that you open it yes. up? Yes. Yeah. So I, okay. I had, we all had our own records. So I had my day. My brother had more of a. James Brown Motown Day. That's all we listened to all day. Mm -hmm. um, my sister, I forget what she listened to, but my father always listened to jazz. My mother listened to opera. Sunday was opera day, and I was like, okay, I'm not listening on Sunday. I'm going to my room. <laughs> <laughs> you and didn't I, like opera. What's wrong with I you? I learned no. years later <laughs> to, to like opera, especially yeah. learning how to sing because I was not a natural singer. I had to learn which is just to let you folks out there know who want to sing that you can learn. People may tell you, people told me that I could never learn to sing. They said, if you're not natural, you're never going to be a singer. <laughs> <laughs> you can learn. You can Ask learn. me. You yeah. can learn. Um, yeah, so my father, my father listened to jazz all the time. And what, what kind of jazz? He listened to like Cannonball Adderley, um, Pharaoh Saunders. That he did. He just he listened to everything. Blues, but but blues since team. he had to, I never heard any blues when my father was playing no, his music. Okay. But since everybody had to choose a day for a kind of music, mm -hmm. um, my father chose jazz. And my very first jazz album that I bought was Modern Jazz Quartet, mm -hmm. MJQ. And just listening to that with um, Nancy Wilson singing, mm -hmm. that was it for me. When I heard that, I thought, this is the kind of music I want to listen to. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think that yet that I wanted to sing. I was not, you know, um, really into that until, until the agent came, yeah. you know. And, and then I realized that I was into well, it. Well, because your mom, probably you heard a million times that... You're going to go to college and you're going to have a career. She said, your dad doesn't make enough money. That. Musicians don't make enough money. Don't become a musician. Mm -hmm. Become a doctor. Become a teacher. What, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, you so. know what's so cool, though? Uh, talking about your, the, the, you know, a day that each one of you could choose to hear music, to listen to music. Yeah. That was, that's so cool right oh, there. Oh, yeah. So kids were involved. They had the choice to... to um, you know, get involved in the family yes. circle and, and would all of you get together? <laughs> and what what the, the nicest memory that I had is when my father would, would play, like sometimes a gig, but my fondest memory is the Labor Day Parade because my mm -hmm. father, they used to have these big floats because it was actually, we called it the West Indian Day Parade, but it was mm -hmm. the Labor Day Parade. And they'd have all of these floats and people with costumes dancing around and have all of this Caribbean music. And my father sounds, sounds like uh, Mardi Gras. It is Mardi Gras. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> it is Mardi Gras. And the floats would come down the street, and there would be this big float with my father's band, and it was built like a pyramid, mm -hmm. and the musicians, lots of musicians, sitting around it, and my father would be sitting on the top of the pyramid mm -hmm. with his saxophone uh -huh. and the pyramid would come down the street and the music was playing and all of a sudden the people would jam it they would circle around and the and the float couldn't go anymore and we'd be dancing and the people would say i'm going i'm going to jump up with this one this is the one the one and, the, and we would <laughs> party and we would party and that was like really fun for me but i also enjoyed occasionally going to the gig with my father sounds good now talking about music and this is a show that we want to expose our artists to the audience how about you play a song for us right now i would love to yeah cool <laughs> yeah. what would it be um i'll play a love song for you okay which i wrote this kind of a story behind it okay i was very unhappy because I was not dating anybody and I wanted to manifest this special man into my life. So uh -huh. I wrote a song about what kind of man I wanted to be with, what I, how I wanted him to treat me. And it's called You Do That For Me. You Do That For Me. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Here we go. The Empress singing You Do That For Me. Here we go. 
This is a song that I wrote, which was actually a wish because I was trying to manifest uh, the proper man in my life. And so I wrote a song about the kind of guy that I wanted to be with. And it's called, You Do That For Me. my strength and still want to protect me you keep your promises to me with devoted responsibility that's why i love you cause you do that for me song that Thank was you. When, how old were you when you wrote that um i was about 63 maybe 64 63. somewhere somewhere between 60 and 60 now you manifested to the universe did the yes. universe respond oh absolutely positively yeah. without a doubt <laughs> is that the 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 um the the uh your your other side, which is Ray. That's Ray Spiro. That's my husband, he's, Ray Spiro. He's a very cool guy. <laughs> Better known as El Ray. El Ray in Mexico. El Rey. Yes. Okay, so uh, let's let's move on to now um, when you became a professional. How did? Well, uh, well, just a little bit before that, like, how did you jump into being a professional? And uh, uh, tell us what happened. Oh, that's like such a long story. So many stories. I had an allergy to jobs. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I always had a difficult... I would find like really good jobs, but I would have difficulty keeping them because I wasn't finding anything that made me happy. So I would work for the money all the time and mm -hmm. eventually I would leave. Mm -hmm. 
and be worried and wondering about what was the next money that I'm, that I'm going to make. Um, so I got into theater. I got into dramatic theater and uh, television. But I didn't get enough jobs doing television mm -hmm. in order to sustain myself. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that all my friends who were doing musicals were working all the time. Mm -hmm. okay. So I thought that I should switch to music some kind of way, either start auditioning for musicals or play music. So now let me let me interject a bit. Did you um, have any training with with acting, with with singing, or was your mom telling you, no, you're not going to become a musician. You have to go to college. <laughs> what happened then? Well, I actually left home when I started college. Okay. So I went to college as a theater major. <laughs> left home as in ran away from home. As, as in ran away. <laughs> really? Ran away, uh, ran away. From the strict I ran away. Mom? And, well, my or... father was more strict than my mom was. Okay. But my mom just had certain things that it's like this, okay. you know, so, um, so I did, yes, I ran away and that's another whole story. You can read about that when I write my book. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I majored in theater, theater, mm -hmm. um, and I minored in speech and I took all kinds of music classes. I did an extra stint at Hunter College in New York in order to, to study music was interesting and CUNY uh, that's also CUNY I, yeah. I, I went to I graduated from Brooklyn College that's part CUNY unit has several universities what does CUNY stand for City University of New York oh, okay so all I've heard of, it before but I didn't, wasn't exactly sure what that was yeah well it doesn't tell you exactly which university you be went several. to because it could have been in any borough many of us okay yeah gotcha so I graduated from Brooklyn College, and, okay. and then I went to Hunter um, to study music. Okay. And um, it was interesting. And I so you got into forgot the question. <laughs> well, I, I just went back a little bit to 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 learn about you know your education. So you had some training that you could jump into theater. And I had a lot of training because I I went to. New Heritage Repertory Theater, and I studied under Roger Furman, yeah. which was, for me, was my first real training. Okay. And then on the I, job training. Yes, it was on the job training. OJT. And then I went to uh, Woody King Jr., um, New Federal, uh, in, in Manhattan also. And so I had a lot of experience. I had a lot of training. Mm, okay. in theater. I had a lot of wonderful training, met a lot of wonderful people. How long of a stint did you do in theater? I did maybe about four years doing theater and working a job, doing office temporary mm -hmm. work. And I just got distracted by the money. Mm -hmm. So I left the theater completely. Oh no. And I worked four years. I started teaching school. I taught in Bedford Stuyvesant in Brooklyn. I taught for almost eight years. So I taught... this is private school, right? No, this is public school. Public. Oh, I so taught... you got a degree in teaching. Yeah, yeah. As well. I, t I taught elementary school and I taught junior high school. And then after that, around that time in between, I, I learned word processing when the first uh, desktop computers came out. Mm -hmm. My first computer was a Wang PC. <laughs> okay. Do you so remember the com a Commodore? I started with a Commodore. Uh, yeah, I remember the Commodore. The Commodore, Atari. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh so I learned all of these different <clears throat> computer systems and I became an admin manager or an administrator and I did all of these temporary oh, so you work to, as a consultant. Took a, quite a took turn, quite from, a turn from show business. And eventually I opened my own business mm -hmm. uh, as a computer consultant and a teacher and I wrote textbooks, computer textbooks and for different kinds of software. Now your stuff. musical career stopped completely? For how many, completely. 14 years or so? For I guess about 20 years 20 years yeah oh my god yeah, that's a long yeah, time didn't, didn't do anything you know once in a while i would try to sing something i didn't play guitar and I, when i had my first guitar i only played for one year and when i left home that was it because the guitar stayed there and i went somewhere else oh, no. 
And um, every time I would pick up the guitar, I would play like for a year and then stop. So I had a guitar when I was 16. Then I had another guitar when I was about 32, which I played for one year. Yeah, that's, and then that's I had a huge another span. guitar when I moved to Germany. I got a guitar in my 50s. I see. And I played for maybe two years. Three so years what happened? How did you re reignite your musical career after <laughs> those 20 years? I got a tour to Germany. I had decided my business... But wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. How, do, how does a businesswoman this is what, get into a tour? I was running this computer business, uh -huh. and um, I was working 16 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh -huh. I would work until I was totally exhausted and near death. <laughs> I would be looking, looking like... I must be homeless because I was so thin and so stressed and I looked really, really terrible. But I was making a lot of money. So I was mm. totally distracted and one day... You got into the money game. I got into the money thing and mm. one day I realized how exhausted I was and, and that I wasn't really happy. I was challenged. I like to meet challenges. Yeah. But I wasn't really happy and I thought... What can I do to make me happy? And, and where, what were you doing that, you know, that um, getting money, what, what was it filling for you? What, it, getting the money was not fulfilling anything. No, no. What was it fill, filling? There was something empty in your life. And it wasn't you said filling money anything. is going to, to do it, something. It wasn't, it wasn't filling anything. What was well, you realized fulfilling it. was... The challenge of technology. Okay. It's a technology just really, really excited me, and just learning um, different computer systems, okay. you know, from from the mainframe to the desktop, everything because everything was so new and everything was being developed in the seventies. Everything was okay. new for the. So it public. wasn't the 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 Cadillac, the Mercedes, the house, never the jewelry, bought a car. The... I uh, never bought a car like that, never bought, bought a house. I did buy a fur coat, like, <laughs> and that was like, like it. It didn't dawn on me that I could do all of those things and buy all of that stuff with mm -hmm. money. I was just making money because I was involved with the technology. I was learning new computer uh -huh. systems. I was teaching people. I was writing computer books. Were you single during that time? No, I was married oh, okay. to a musician. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you were supporting him. Uh, no, actually, <laughs> he, was, he, he was really, really good. He was very, very popular, and he was really making good money, so there was no need for me actually to work. Oh, okay. I was um, just going back to what your mom had said. Oh, that was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the thing was that I was a workaholic, and he was, like, really laid back. So, so mm -hmm. emotionally, we didn't really fit. Because mm -hmm. he was just, he was cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was cool. And I was, ah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so that relationship ended. But we were together for about 14 years. Any kids? No. No kids. No. Okay. I was a workaholic. I was yeah, into you're, my. You were too busy. You know, I was too busy. I why don't, why kids. don't we take a little break here? And, and so we can um, have our audience listen to you once more. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, sure. Uh, what would you like to play? Well, since we've been talking about so much about business and how I got out of business, mm -hmm. I will play a song for you that tells you a little bit more about where I am today. Is it an original? As it's well? an original. Okay. It's called Rock to the Rhythm. Rock to the Rhythm. Yeah. Here we are again with Empress and her own composition. Rock to the Rhythm. Rock to the Rhythm. Here we go. Deep down in my soul 
When the spirit takes over, over All I want to do is rock to the rhythm of a beat I want to dance a while Got my own peculiar style I don't care what they say I'm gonna do it my way When the rhythm hits my feet The feeling takes control All I wanna do is rock to the rhythm Vibrations pounding in my brain And the rhythm running through my soul The spirit moves my feet I lose my control Come on and rock with me And set your spirit free And let the rhythm take control up on that hip thing I'm not the one who stays out until dawn But when the feeling comes of me I want to party all night long When the party is going strong And the rhythm goes deep down in my soul When the spirit takes over all I want to do is rock to the rhythm of the beat I want to dance a while, got my own peculiar style I don't care what they say, I'm gonna do it my way When the rhythm hits my feet, the feeling takes control Vibrations pounding in my brain and the rhythm running through my soul. The spirit moves my feet, I lose my control. Come on and rock with me and set your feelings free and let the rhythm take control. Rock to the rhythm, I want to rock. Yeah, 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 rock to the rhythm. Ooh, oh, I rock to the rhythm. Rock. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we're back with Empress. I love that song. Tell us a little more what it means to you, because the words certainly uh, are poignant. Well, I took a lot of criticism as, as a youngster. Uh -huh. And people always said I couldn't sing and I couldn't dance and I was always concerned about how other people saw me. So that was one of the things that will make you unhappy. Uh -huh. So I realized that I had to make myself happy and I had to be happy with myself. Absolutely. So I stopped worrying about what other people think about me. Uh -huh. So I wrote this song. Uh -huh which tells you about me. It's yeah. called Rock to the Rhythm. Right. I tell you, I ain't up on that hip thing. I'm not doing what you're doing. I'm doing my own, own thing. I love it. All I want to do is rock. So I love leave me song. alone. <laughs> now, now, when did you write that? Because you said you, you, um, you didn't come out to be really uh, feeling good about yourself until, until much later in life, right? I wrote that song in the 90s like around 94 uh -huh. 96 yeah. took me a while to get around to recording it yeah. and to singing it because i was writing all the time uh and when i performed i was not confident enough to perform my original music so uh -huh. i always performed covers jazz standards and covers yeah so in the last few years, I've gotten into performing my own music. That is so, so cool. It's a long time <clears throat> trying to get confident enough. Absolutely. No, it's, it's, uh, it's very difficult and, and it's uh, very admirable to be able to do your own music. I, yeah. I love it and uh, <laughs> uh, I love that song as well. Thank, Thank you for, for Thank sharing you. that with, with our audience. So um, we only have about 10 more minutes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about where you... now. You told me that you were in Germany mm -hmm. uh, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about that and, and any other places that you've traveled. And then 
what are you doing in Puerto Vallarta, <laughs> and what are your plans for the future? Oh, that's a lot. Okay, <laughs> let's try to make a brief 10 minutes. Um, I went to Germany on tour with the musical Hair. Okay. I got casted in New York City and they said, well, if you want the job, you have two days to leave. And I was in the middle of a divorce and it was just perfect timing. So I went to Germany and I never came back to New York. What year was that? That was 1992. Okay, so that's after your your marriage and that those 20 I, years I was you still worked, in that in that marriage but we there. were getting divorced. Okay. So you go to Germany? I go to in Germany. 92. And, and I stay there for 23 years. Okay. I was, I was only going to stay. The, the tour was eight months. And I thought when the tour was over, I would stay a few more months and make a little extra money because people were offering me work. So I'm wondering, and people are probably wondering, why did you stay in Germany of all places? <laughs> well, because the people were so kind. Uh, and they offered me work. Uh, I got I got a lot of work as a I, singer as performer. a singer as a singer I okay. immediately got a house from a very wonderful gentleman Uli Rain if you ever see this I never forget you and I was in a lovely community and introduced around to the musicians so what, what city I was in a small town called Oldenburg it's about uh, 40 minutes from Hamburg depending upon how fast you drive okay <laughs> and they drive fast in Germany oh yes <laughs> we drive fast uh, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ein bisschen. Nach 23 Jahren in Deutschland muss man ein bisschen Deutsch lernen. <laughs> ah, jawohl. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's so so I, I got a lot of work while I was there. Uh -huh. I met a lot of people. I got married again uh -huh. while I was there. With Ray? No, I hadn't met Ray, Ray yet. I got married to someone else who is now better known as my German jerk. <laughs> German jerk. Is it uh, a, a German national? German national, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. So 25 years as a performer in Germany, you loved the hospitality, uh, the people, yeah. uh, the culture. Yeah, the culture is is different. There were some <laughs> things that I liked, but culturally just did, did not become my culture. Okay. What happened was I developed an extended family, and I have a lot of wonderful, wonderful friends there mm -hmm. who I love and, and who I miss. And the thing that's good is that they still write me and they still call mm -hmm. me where we stay in contact with each other. Mm -hmm. So, And when I first left Germany, I continued to go back and forth to tour. Mm -hmm. And I was touring Germany every year until COVID hit. Once COVID uh, hit, that... Where was your other home? My other home was Las Vegas. I moved to Las Vegas after oh. I got divorced. Okay. And that's where I met Ray. Oh, so after Germany, you went to Vegas. I went to Vegas. And you performed I went, in Vegas. I went to New York because I, I wanted to be near my family, but I realized that I'm not a New Yorker anymore. Mm -hmm. And it just got so crowded. It was just really horrible for me and oh. so expensive. And, and I knew people in Las Vegas because I had worked in Las Vegas before. So I moved to Las Vegas. What and year was that? Uh, 2013. Okay. And and you performed in Vegas? Yeah, a little. Not much. Not much. Not okay. much. I was not in a state of mind at that time to continue as an artist. Oh. And I had really withdrawn. Really? What, what happened? Oh, the, 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 the divorce. It was just ugly. I don't even want to talk about oh, it. Oh, okay. really, Well, it was, let's not go there. It was a nightmare. So then uh, after Vegas, um, did you end up in Puerto Vallarta? By yeah, a, I, I like uh, moved to, to Vegas. And oh, you met Ray in Vegas. And I met Ray. Ray was... was uh, el Rey. Managing. Hola, El Rey. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, brother? He was managing a, a jazz club. Yeah. Okay. There and um, a mutual friend of ours took me there to introduce me to him because I was looking for work. And she said, oh, I know this guy who has a jazz club. You know, you should go there and sing for him and maybe you'll get a job. Mm -hmm. And that's how it all started. Oh, and we've wow. been together ever since. How wonderful. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Puerto Vallarta? So, Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> I was flying back and forth to Germany every year to do these tours, and 
Ray was flying back and forth with me because that's what husbands do. And I just got so tired of the travel. It was just too much for me. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I wanted to move back to Germany. And he said, okay, you know, it's no problem wherever you want to be. It's fine with me. I'll find something to do there too. Mm -hmm. Easily, because every time we went to Germany, people would fall in love with him and give him work too. So he was actually working there too. It was really an exciting adventure mm -hmm. for us. So we decided to move back to Germany. We sold as much of we, as we could of our household items and everything else we gave away and we packed and we took our dog and went to get on the plane. And when we got to the airport, I didn't have my passport and we could not get on the plane. There was no place to go back to because we had already given up the house. Everything was, was empty. Uh -huh. So I had to get a new passport. Las Vegas is small, so they didn't have a passport office. Mm -hmm. So we had to drive. I wanted to get a passport in 24 hours. So the only place we could get one that day, because it was like five or six o'clock in the morning, was to drive to San Diego. Yeah. So we drove to San Diego, got there at about nine o'clock in the morning, applied for the passport, mm -hmm. and they said, come back at four o'clock and pick it up. So we thought, okay, we'll spend the day looking around. We went down to the marina. We went out to eat. Was that your first time in San Diego? That was my first time yeah. in San Diego. That, I'm originally from there. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful, beautiful and we got distracted and we missed the four o'clock pickup. Uh -oh. So the office closed uh -huh. and we were stuck in San Diego and I was looking online trying to find an Airbnb so we could spend the night and pick up the passport the next day. And... When I was looking online, I saw Airbnbs in Mexico. So a one night stay in San Diego at the last minute was gonna cost like $250. Mm -hmm. One night stay in Mexico was gonna cost $25. <laughs> so I looked at Ray and I said, oh man, it's only $25 for an Airbnb in Mexico. We should go to Mexico. And I was joking and he said, we're only 40 minutes from the border. Let's go. So we looked up and we found the, uh, an Airbnb, which was a little more expensive, owned by a, a, a beautiful artist by the name of D. Michael. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And we ended up staying there three days and we had so much fun. In Tijuana, Rosarito? No, it was uh, Rosarita. Rosarita, okay. Rosarita. Rosarito. <laughs> <laughs> and after having this little three-day vacation there, I just looked at Ray and I said, why are we moving to Germany? We should be moving to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and we he just... He was all for it. Huh? He was all for it. Because he had lived here before. In Puerto Vallarta? He had, he had lived in so many places in Mexico. Okay. Um, but his favorite place was Miss Maloya. Okay. So he said, I know just the place for us to live. So this trip, since we missed the flight anyway, I took a flight to Germany because I had to do the tour. He went back to Las Vegas, stayed with some friends, reorganized himself, and then he drove here and um, found us a place to live. And when mm -hmm. I flew back from Germany, I flew to Puerto Vallarta. And when, when was that? That was 2000, I think it was 2019. 2019 okay yeah so not that long ago and you've been here yeah and you play in town you're right now you're at uh, la catrina cantina yes and you host uh, tuesday's uh fat jam. tuesday fat, fat tuesday. tuesday jazz and blues yeah. jam session what else are, are you doing uh performing here in, in Bayarta and what, what other things are you involved in? Well, I've done um, a lot of benefit things. Uh, I'm involved with the Vallarta Food Bank mm -hmm. and I did some benefits at Casa Karma. Okay. I worked at Pasitos de Luz for a while as a volunteer. Is that the school? Or? Uh, it, it's a facility that, that includes a school. Okay. Um, it has medical services and food services for special needs children. 
So I did that for a while, and I still support them in different ways. I, I don't teach there anymore, but uh, I do fundraisings for them, participate in a lot of stuff. Um, I played several different restaurants, you know, just the general things general that, thing. that, that everybody does. Exactly. But this one I'm doing now at uh, La Catrina Cantina so far. This is my favorite project. I put together a band called Empress and the Crown Jewels. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> because the musicians are so awesome. Yeah. You, got, you got to see these guys. You got to come and, 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 and hear us play. And we're so doing there every Tuesday? Every Tuesday. Okay. And what are your plans for the future? What are you planning here in Vallarta? Well, we have a Ray and I have a pro, a project which we call Jazz in the Jungle. Okay. And we found the perfect venue for it in Miss Maloya. So mm -hmm. we are going to start doing concerts there. You can read about it on my Patreon page. I need subscribers. <laughs> mm -hmm. By the way, Miss Maloya is a little beach town on the southern end of Puerto Vallarta, just, just so people understand. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, it's, so it's only cool. like 15 minutes from, from Playa Los Muertos, right? Yes. Going south. Yes. So you're planning on um, creating a, a space for jazz in the jungle. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's enough right now. We just moved into a new house. Oh, yeah. So we're we're renovating. It's a duplex. It's two floors. It's got a huge piece of property. Mm -hmm. um, and we're focusing a lot of attention on that because that's now going to be... We moved a couple of times, but that's the home that we've been wanting for so long. Mm -hmm. And so we're putting a lot of energy into that right now. So I'm trying to just stay with two projects, maybe a third project, which is the trio project, which is something yeah. I want to do with you. Oh, oh really? <laughs> yes, I'd like to, to invite you to do a project with, with me. Oh, okay. Um, what, what, what are you thinking? I'm thinking about, well, you know, I play guitar, uh -huh. so I'm thinking about a project with guitar, violin, and percussion. Okay. That because I want to do something that's really unique. Uh, and I think that you are really unique mm -hmm. and together we can make something incredible that people have never seen or heard before. So are you thinking about doing covers or original stuff? Original or? music. I, I, I do covers because people feel more comfortable hearing something that they know. So I always throw one or two covers in the show, but I want original music. And I want to be involved with people who write original music and do their own thing. Uh, that sounds so, so exciting. I, I would love to do something. Yes. Uh, talking about that, um, why don't we um, play something together? And Super. <laughs> I, I'd love to improvise with my guests. Okay. Um, and see what happens. Super. Let's do yeah? that. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. What, what are we going to do? Let's do blues, blues because that because that's the easiest thing if I uh, to to do that's not complicated. Okay, let's sounds do good. blues tune. I, I have a blues tune that I like to do that's called fine brown frame. Fine brown frame. Yes. What what is that? Is there anything behind um, that? Stuff? It's like that like song? fine brown frame. It's like you know. Oh frame. <laughs> like, frame. Yeah. Oh okay. I'm, I'm getting. <laughs> Vision now. Okay. But for you, it would be frame. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of frame. <laughs> you th yeah, you think of this frame, I don't think of that frame. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Okay. okay. Here we are uh, at Studio 72. We're going to do some improvisation. Blues. Here we go. So this is a song I think you're going to like. <laughs> it's a blues song, and it's called Fine Brown Frame. Fine Brown Frame. Frame, F R A M E, like your. Oh, frame, yeah. oh. Frame, fine brown frame. Oh, now, I, now I can see it. <laughs> okay. Sounds good, let's see. Okay. One, two, three, four. I can see is your fine brown friend. 
a broken down chair I would gladly make you king of my throne Don't be a square, why don't you come over here Together we can really get it on and on And you got a fine brown brain And I wonder what could be your name I want to scream, whoa, cause I never seen such a fine to the stuff that they talk in the streets, but baby, you've got a fine round frame, and I wonder what could be your name, you know I'm a clown whenever you're around, because I'm crazy about, I'm mad about, I'm wild about, That was such a fun song. I yeah. loved it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you played your butt off. <laughs> oh, I, I just get a little yeah, crazy. Um, but let uh, our folks know where they can find you. Okay, uh, so yes. um, there are a few places you can find me. I have a Patreon page. It's called Empress and El Rey. And there are some videos on there with my music. There's lots of stories. Stories about my life, if you want to <laughs> learn a little bit more about me, you can just read my, my blog. I have a website, which is called EmpressAlyasha.com. So that's E-M-P-R-E-S-S-A-L-Y-A-S-H-A.com. And that has my whole history in it and a lot of information that might be interesting to you because it's worldwide, international information and of course i'm on facebook and on facebook i'm empressa alyasha empressa empressa <clears throat> with an a on the end of the empress and because why is that? because facebook says empress is not a name so uh, i had to add a letter to fool them oh i see because they're I just see. getting too much into everybody's business there's no privacy anymore you know there's no it's so hard to control your own thing now because yeah. the government and the uh corporations are just into everything and i don't want to talk about any more politics that was it for me yeah for today. okay okay <laughs> <laughs> i just want to thank you again for coming to the studio interviewing you um, had lots of fun. You're a fantastic woman. Um, I love your life, what you shared with us. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot, lot more. But uh, write a book. You, you <laughs> I get, didn't write it yet, but <laughs> and you're writing a book. I'm writing a book. Yeah. When is it coming out? Oh, I don't know because it just changes all the time. It gets okay. bigger. It gets smaller. I have well, no idea. Well, I, 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 uh, I will wait and patiently and you'll let me know when, when it's will. out i will thanks again for for coming in i i loved you being here with me and and sharing about uh, your life thank you impress thank you really thank you so it. much for the invitation this can was can just you... so much fun <laughs> yes thank you this is empress al yasha and diego mondragon take care of yourselves and each other